What's up, YouTube? What's up, February? How we looking? Coach Max here, welcoming you back to the Coach's Chair. Sometimes, when I have a lot on my mind, I have to speak it, and this is one of those times. As usual, if anything I say here strikes a chord with you, let me know by hitting that like button, leaving a comment, subscribing, or preferably all three of those things. Anyway, I've mentioned in previous videos that my GM and my league are among my favorite modes in NBA 2K. I like the process of building and developing teams, trying different lineups, and occasionally seeing what happens if we make the kind of changes actual coaches and GMs wouldn't consider. That's part of why when I decided to make the jump from viewer to creator, I started out with my GM and went to my league when that didn't pan out for me. But while my GM and my league are among my favorite modes now, and were the main inspirations for me starting this channel, neither of them were the mode that I wanted to play the most when I thought about picking up 2K for the first time back in 2015. The mode I was most looking forward to then was my career. Nowadays, my career is kind of buried under one problem or another, whether it be cringy cutscenes, gruesome grinding, the miasma of microtransactions, whatever. But once upon a time, hard as it might be to believe now, my career was alright. At times, it was even pretty good. And to be honest, I still do like it, I just find I like it a lot less than I used to. In writing the script for this video, I realized that if you don't count the prelude, the last time I spent a significant amount of serious time on my career was back when I first got it, 2K16. By that, I mean the last time I wanted to play the My Career Story mode because I specifically wanted to do that and not because I just wanted to experiment with a different build was three years ago. I didn't spend a lot of time with 2K17 in general because a different, better game made up too much of my time, so I knew I hadn't played much then. But thinking back to 2K18, I don't recall much time past the prelude. I honestly spent more time watching Chris Smoove's playthrough of it than playing it myself, and I don't feel like I missed out on anything really. I did play through my career some though, around July, and mostly to work on a different build that I wanted to use for my career this year, since my intention once upon a time was to upload it. As for 2K19, well, I really liked The Way Back. Watching it, that is, because I only got through about two thirds of it before life once again got in the way. But if you were to ask me about any memorable cutscenes after it, I couldn't really tell you. Just off the top of my head, I think there were some good interactions with Shaq and Kareem, which I credit more to Shaq and Kareem than I do 2K. But beyond that, I couldn't tell you anything. I couldn't even name any original character outside of the way back without Googling it, never mind checking out someone else's YouTube videos. And then I realized, just like last year, I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything by not playing this mode. Sure, there are other modes that I don't really play for one reason or another, but with those modes, I feel like I'm missing some part of the 2K experience because of it. Like, I can't really call myself part of the 2K community because I'm not good enough for Parker Pro-Am and not really willing to fork over the money to run my team. Oh, and just to make it clear, that is not a slight against those modes. My unwillingness to spend money for my team is similar to my unwillingness to spend money for VC in general. It may be a problem with the system, but it's more of a personal choice for me. And if I were good enough to play on the park or pro-am and or had a good squad, I would totally run there, maybe even upload my gameplay without worrying that I'm not just bad at the game, but so bad that it's more sad than entertaining. But my career? Nobody really plays that except to grind badges now, right? Nobody really likes or wants the story, do they? My career actually being fun? <laughs> that can't be right, can it? Well, I'm that guy who played my career for the story. At least, I used to be that guy. Now I just kinda don't play my career. And while I don't think I'm missing out, I do kinda miss it. While there's a story to get immersed in for five hours or so, I kinda miss having a longer form narrative to get invested in. I kind of miss the point of my career being living the life of an NBA player on the come up and trying to make it in the league. Nowadays it feels a bit more like all the NBA stuff is just glorified training for the park and pro-am. Like it's not really meant to be fun, but more like work. 
like playing in the NBA really is your job and not the kind of job you love and you hit the neighborhood or the Pro-Am Arena when you want to have fun. It's kind of like a first-person shooter where the single-player campaign is less about the story and more about preparing you for the online multiplayer. And honestly, the fact that the jokes about my career being a grind aren't really jokes didn't really hit me until I started writing this and thinking about it. And I wonder, what went wrong? When did 2K go off the deep end with this? And why? To give a little backstory of my experience, I first discovered 2K back around 2009 when I stumbled upon Chris Smoove. Honestly, I don't recall exactly how this was because I wasn't super into basketball back then. If you were to tell me that I accidentally clicked on one of Smooth's videos and ended up sticking around for the commentary, that would probably be as accurate as anything. Either way, I started watching Smooth's My Player videos and thought the game looked cool, but ultimately wasn't really my thing because, as I said, basketball wasn't really my favorite back then. A few years later, a couple things happened that changed all that for me. Number one, my hometown Golden State Warriors were starting to seriously turn some heads. Number two, my career got a story to work with. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, sports games have never actually been among my favorite genres until relatively recently. I mean, I liked sports games, but they were never mark the release day on the calendar and take the day off of work territory for me. At the risk of sounding like a bigger nerd than just about the entire 2K community, the entire NBA commentary community, and roughly 80-90% to 90 of everyone here that isn't covering video games or geek or nerd culture, my favorite genre is the RPG. The first game I ever played to completion was Dragon Quest on the NES, and its two sequels are still among my favorite games even to this day. But it was the SNES, and offerings like the Final Fantasy series, Chrono Trigger, Secret of Mana, Earthbound, Super Mario RPG, and Breath of Fire that pretty much got me hooked for life. That's just a partial list, by the way, but they are the big reason why I still go for these sprawling epics that I don't really have the time to play fully anymore. Nowadays, you see a lot of games including RPG elements in their mechanics. Whether they're doing it to capitalize on a growing acceptance of such elements, or to capitalize on people liking achievement-based systems, which are sort of RPG-like on their own, is anyone's guess. But you have to figure that when 2K17 was pitching itself as the ultimate sports RPG, there was somebody in marketing that believed that calling the game an RPG was a good thing. And I get that. I do very much like RPG elements, and when done well, they improve the experience of any game for me because they both appeal to my nostalgia and give me a feeling of improving and winning. However, just as having RPG in your elements doesn't necessarily make your game an RPG as the genre is most commonly understood, the mechanics aren't what I loved the most about RPGs growing up. What I loved is the story and presentation. The story is why a graphically and mechanically simple game like Lufia and the Fortress of Doom can draw me in. Presentation is what led me to play Persona 5 for basically 16 hours straight the day I bought it. Story and presentation. Two things that 2K really, really sucks at right now. Okay, that's actually not fair, because really, The Way Back was a big step forward for me after a 2K18 that was memorable for all the wrong reasons. It would be more accurate to say that 2K can do story really good for about 5 to 10 hours, but any good from that gets wiped out by the next 87,000 hours of grinding and barebones cutscenes starring your player and 2K's one-note wonders. Now, you might be thinking, why is this such a big deal, coach? It's a sports game. Nobody plays sports games for the story. And you're right. Even having spent this long bloviating about the faults of the My Career story, I play 2K primarily to play a basketball game. If I specifically wanted a great story, I've named several already. If I wanted more action to go with that story, why hello there, Kingdom Hearts 3. However, I think that's a bit short-sighted of an argument, not just because of the belief that a good story can make anything better, but because 2K used to be okay at this whole story thing, and the basic building blocks are good enough to make things work. Let me set the tone. You're given a backstory, a goal to accomplish, and the motivation for doing so. You've got someone to support you along the way, and you've got obstacles to overcome. Maybe you also have a rival who is either trying to stop you from reaching your goal, or has a similar one and they're trying to get there before you do. Now, am I describing my career here? Or am I describing Pokemon? 
Am I describing the My GM Saga, or am I describing Fire Emblem? Or maybe I'm throwing up some kind of needlessly flashy past to flex my nerdiness and describing less known games like Uncharted Waters, Destiny of an Emperor, Robotrek, or The Seventh Saga. That was a trick question, by the way. All of these games fit that description on some level. The thing is, though, as much as I'm raving and ranting about the importance of story, it's not the only thing or even the most important thing. There has to be a good substance, i.e. a good game to play, along with that story. The story helps the gameplay, the gameplay helps the story, and they continue building each other up until you have something awesome. Pokemon has catching them all and working your way to becoming a champion, which is fundamental to both the gameplay and the story. Fire Emblem is a great tactical RPG that in recent years also developed some incredibly memorable and memeable personalities. Uncharted Waters has the Age of Exploration, Destiny of an Emperor has the formation of China's latter Han Dynasty as told by Romance of the Three Kingdoms, Robotrek combines building mecha with a wonderfully quirky aesthetic, and the Seventh Saga is hard as all heck like RPGs were back in the day. My career has 87,000 hours of grinding after you drop the money to bypass the first third of it or so. And you don't even have to play it that way because if you just want to play basketball but you're not really interested in building up your player character for the park or pro-am, you can always just play now and set a position lock. There, now instead of all the work of building your player into the next LeBron James or Stephen Curry, you can play as the Lakers or the Warriors, lock yourself into a position so you don't have to control the other four guys on your team, and actually play as LeBron James or Stephen Curry. Now, I'm being pretty harsh on the grinding, and I promise it's not just because I'm not good at the game or have the time to play it with the frequency of elite players or even casual players who don't have a full-time day job. It's because the grinding is a grind. It's work. It's not all that fun. And the few things that surround it aren't really rewarding enough to make me want to put in the work. If I wanted to work at basketball, as opposed to having fun with basketball, I'll go outside, find a court, and do some drills. The difference is, I actually enjoy doing that, except for maybe the running drills. Don't get me wrong, level grinding is repetitive work, but it's the kind of work that can be enjoyable. Actually, scratch that. This is a game, so it's the kind of work that should be enjoyable. An old episode of Bob Chipman's The Game Overthinker, titled The Zen of Grind, which I'll link in the description, puts it best. For some, level grinding is a beloved mechanic that rewards time and effort put into a game with tangible results. To others, it's an irritating obstacle. These days, with RPG elements being much more prevalent, this opinion is less of a binary and more of a spectrum. And where I fall on that spectrum depends on the game. For 2K, it's more irritating obstacle. Although it would be more accurate to say depressing obstacle. Depressing because it seems like the whole point of my career now is not playing a story, but going further down the road to 99. Basically, the grind in my career is not to advance a story, it's to advance your numbers. And while I like advancing my numbers, I want to advance them with a purpose. Previous 2Ks had that purpose. That purpose being going through life as an NBA player and dealing with the various situations that come from it. I never played 2K14 or 2K15, but I've watched them, and while the cutscenes were pretty simple, they worked. In fact, they still work because they are the B-sides that add dimension to the main story that is you and the NBA. They took a left turn in 2K16 with Spike Lee and Livin' to Dream, but for all the accurate criticism of the story basically being he got game 2.0 and frequency vibrations being one of the stupidest nicknames ever, I liked it for the most part. All the characters were fleshed out, real personalities, and while there were a few holes here and there, mostly in the form of Yvette, I really enjoyed playing through it. 2K16 would be the start of two trends that we would see in some fashion in the next three games. Firstly, the shift from a blank slate protagonist to one that has a personality of their own, so it's less you playing you and more you playing a character. And secondly, the decision to have the bulk of the story be in the first 5 to 10 hours of play, and then there's not much else after about two thirds of the season. 2K17, to me, was the pinnacle of the My Career story because it blended the stronger personality and motivation of the protagonist characters that 2K16 saw, but kept the story going with legitimate bits of NBA life like 2K14 and 2K15 did. So the prelude built on the interest, the mid-season cutscenes kept that interest going, and it all made up a nice package. In retrospect, I'm kinda sorry that I didn't get to play it much back then, because looking back, it was nice. It was just directly up against one of the absolute best games of the year. And then, there was 2K18. 
I guess that's where 2K found out that Park and My Team were the most popular game modes, or at least the ones that made the most money, and they had the ambitious ideas of The Neighborhood and The Road to 99, so they focused on those to the detriment of just about everything else. At least, that's what I'm telling myself. The story, what there was of it, was just... <sighs> years of good characters, years of improvement, years of momentum, all of that thrown away in favor of an abundance of stale ham and Reese's Puffs. I mean, it wasn't all bad. There were some good moments here or there, usually coming in the form of more colorful personalities like Shammy Wells and Joel Embiid, but the bad certainly outweighed it. We went from trying to be a Hall of Fame basketball player to trying to get into Michael Jordan's celebrity golf tournament. DJ was a lackluster protagonist, his backstory and motivation were flimsy, and B Fresh made me want to put in my earplugs with pretty much every appearance she made. That's what really kind of put me off in the end. Not that 2K wasn't capable of putting out a good story, but that they were. And whether it was due to inaction or incorrect action, they failed. So hard. So where does the My Career story go from here? I don't know. It really depends on where NBA 2K is going. It seems to want to innovate, as the neighborhood and the 2K League demonstrate, but it seems to me that the more that 2K focuses on making money or becoming an eSport, the more likely that my career is either going to get neglected or just become a mode that's supposed to lead you to where 2K wants. Again, like an FPS where the single player is more like practice for the multiplayer. 2K writers, it does not have to be that way. You've done it right before, you can do it right again. Take the same amount of care and focus that you do with the prelude or the first 5-10 to 10 hours of the story, stretch it out over a season or two with some support, and it'll be a richer experience, or at least make the grind a bit more palatable. And while we're at it, making the grind less of a Sisyphean endeavor would also be good, because that uphill climb is bad even for the people who shell out the money to upgrade to 85, never mind the people who can't or won't do that. If you've got a good story, and you don't give the player a compelling reason to speed through, chances are they'll probably stick around for it. I know I would. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. Thanks for listening. I know I unloaded quite a bit there, and if you stuck around for all of it, you rock. I promise the next 2K video will be more fun. And if you want something that's definitely more fun, I'll be streaming Kingdom Hearts 3 on Sunday. As I mentioned in the beginning, if you agree with anything I've said here, let me know by hitting that like button. If you've got thoughts of your own on this subject, I'd love to hear them in the comments section. And if you want more NBA 2K content, potentially some Kingdom Hearts 3 content, and more importantly, a chance to be instrumental in the direction and growth of this channel, then subscribe, because I'd love to have you. Until next time, take care, y'all.